All right. Let's see if ah, the angle is a little wonky. <laughs> Should have checked this before I actually started. That sort of worked. Not really. No, it's not working here. Chaos is the name of the game here at my little studio. Oh, goodness me. There we go. There we go. <laughs> oh, should have checked all this before. Hi, everybody. Um, sorry for the late start. Um, <laughs> bunch of bunch of stuff been happening the last couple of days. Um, I had my grandmother's 80th birthday party today, so that ran a little bit longer than expected. We had birthday parties last night that were going on, so just this schedule's all out of whack, and... I didn't check my angles and my cameras and everything before I started, so this is where we are now. But um, thank you for coming on and joining me tonight. Um, please let me know if my volume levels are off, but I think they're all set to where they need to be. Um, we are trying out a few different features that I just added into um, the stream. So uh, in addition to doing something a little bit different, with our painting. Um, I'm trying out a few extensions because I've been poking around Twitch and trying to figure out how this business actually works. Um, so one thing that we're trying to get to work, which I'm taking a look at now, um, I tried to add closed captions. Uh, if that's something that uh, you feel would be helpful or beneficial, um, we're trying that out tonight, that extension. And I'm not seeing it pop up so far, but we'll see if we can get that working. And the other part that I added, the other extension that I added onto my Twitch, um, I added on Giphy. So I'm a big fan of GIFs, and so I saw that there was the ability to post GIFs during the stream. So um, you should hopefully have the opportunity to add Giphy on there. Uh, even though the closed captions don't seem to be working, but Giphy should be able to, um, should be able to work. So yeah, the closed captions don't seem to be working. So that's something I'm gonna need to check out. Um, oh, I might need to actually turn them on. That might be part of the problem. One sec. L one sec. One sec. No, that's not the right one. Oh, right here. Turn on. Allow. Okay, so now we're gonna test it out. Like I said, utter chaos here tonight. But I'm hoping that that takes care of the closed captioning. I don't know if that's something that would be beneficial. Um, like I said, I was poking around Twitch and taking a look at what extensions are available. And I figured that that would be something good to have, just in case, um, so that I can have that as an option for those of you who might need to be able to read. And I think I got it now. So I think everything is set there. So yes, um, like I said, I put on the closed captioning in case that's something that would be beneficial for you. And I added the Giphy extension. So if you're at all interested, there should be a little app on your screen where you can post GIFs and throw those up while I'm painting uh, and entertain me <laughs> with GIFs because I really enjoy those. So please send me, send me your GIFs. Throw them up on the screen. Let them be, let them be something exciting to add in there. So far, I'm not seeing- Oh, there they go! Okay, I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep an eye on my Twitch and on my OBS. So yeah, um, I'm a big fan of GIFs. Like I said, throw throw them at me and uh, just have fun with it. Keep it, you know, keep it friendly and appropriate. Um, throw on GIFs of Jeff Probst, please. I would love to see more Jeff Probst thrown on my screen. Um, but yeah, just uh, just found some new ways to hopefully make your experience a little bit better, uh, to give you more opportunities to engage with me while I paint and just to have fun together in the chat um, while we're doing this vibing thing. So, oh, the other thing that I added, um, 
other extension that I added on uh, to my channel was the Spotify uh, currently playing extension because I thought that it might be nice if you're interested in seeing what we're vibing to during painting. Um, I added that on so you should be able to take a look at my, ch my channel and see what is playing at the time. Um, eh, right now it's not apparently working but hopefully we can get that set up so that you can see what music is going while we are, um, what we are hearing while we're painting. So, I could have sworn, I could have sworn that I had already, okay, well, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get it figured out. Only display and add tracks when your stream is. Okay, so the Spotify thing doesn't seem to be working perfectly, but we will hopefully get that working out um, a little bit later on. So I'm talking longer than I should be. You all are here to see some see some crafting going on. Yes, the Giphy is working. Yay, thank you so much. That makes me so happy. So anyway, all that being said, um, I, I am trying to learn Twitch a little bit better, and these seemed like some fun ways for us to get to engage together and have a good time. So hopefully these will all work well for us, and hopefully uh, this will add to your experience. There's the Jeff Probst I know and love. Guys, they announced that they have started filming of season 41 of Survivor. I am so excited. And a friend of mine linked me to a YouTuber who does deep dive analysis on past players and I've just been listening to that all day so I was very excited about that anyway yeah send me your Jeff send me your Jeff probes I'm I'm good with Jeff probes so um with all the chaos of my schedule um we are not I don't want to work on the book nook tonight honestly I am sick to death of that book nook so we have a different project that is not going to take as long it's going to be a little bit shorter but it's one that I really want to get done and I think is going to add a nice break in the usual book nook activities. And as you can see down below, that is basing a miniature for Dungeons and Dragons. So we are going to be doing some mini basing today so that I have it ready to use for our next game, uh, which is this upcoming Friday or the next Friday. Yeah. So we are going to be, uh, I'm going to be bamboozling you a little bit. Yes. But we're going to be doing some, oh dear. Well, maybe not. Maybe not, maybe we won't be doing that. Is the webcam plugged in? I thought the answer was yes. Well, that's just great. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Oh, we're off to a good start here. Oh, the gifts make me happy, but... Let me see if this does it. Um... Well, nuts. I have no idea. Uh, Adam. Adam, if you can hear my voice, please report to the library. We have a technical difficulty. Adam, if you can hear my voice, please help. I don't know what I did wrong. I just want to base my armadillo. Adam, if you are within the sound of my voice... At Adam. He shows up to the chat to, to, to discourage my gifts, and then he ditches. Okay, I guess I'm on my own. I guess I'm on my own. Clearly Adam didn't send that gif because he did not, he's not here for me. Okay, 
We're having a slight issue with the webcam. So, I don't know. I don't know what I did. Yep, that's that's me right now. I my mic too. Oh, this is a disaster. <sighs> this is a disaster. Why why am I like this? All right. I'm going to have to We're going to we're going to hang out for one sec. I need to I need to try to get my tech guy in here. <laughs> Okay, so where is... Hello, everyone. Um, Alright, so are we on... Okay, we need the paint one. Uh, the overhead here. Let's double-check the properties. Uh, we might need to... Might need to recreate that. Did you recreate the overhead object? What do you mean, recreate it? Did you re... Did... Because this happened at one point uh, with me where I had to delete and then recreate... No. Okay, so we're gonna do that. I uh, added the Giphy extension to it. That's the only change that happened to it. Okay, so here's to that one. Hey, and it's back. You it's want it back. full screen? Yes. Let's move it down all the way to the back. Uh, oh shoot, I need to change its uh, resolution because sometime, for some reason, it doesn't want the resolution to be greater than uh, 720, so we want 19, uh, 19, oh, there we go, 1080, aha, and then, Adam, they're never going to want to come back again, yeah, well, this is just a temporary issue, what's that, what was that, that I just shrink. of a bigger problem, uh, that's the paint overlay, that's the what I want, I want to be able to, let me, let me shrink it. Let me shrink it. This is... Okay, laptop pad, not great. People are going nuts with these gifts. I, I did encourage them to do so. I noticed that the footage got a little bit choppy. Yeah, you mentioned that. <laughs> oh, I didn't even turn on my book nook. Okay, we're gonna... I'm just gonna going to move to this. Uh, nope, that's the overlay. I want the video. All right, move that up oh, there. God, this trackpad. <laughs> We're back. We're back. There you okay. go. There Thank is you. your painting. You're welcome. What? So what happened? Uh, it Sometimes it doesn't um, recognize it again um, once it's been unplugged and plugged back in. Okay. Unless it goes directly back into the exact same port. Um, okay. So uh, the that that object, that video capture device that I didn't read into overhead, just uh -huh. named video capture device, just needed deleted and recreated. Okay. And the re resolution needed to be changed to. 1920 by 1080. Okay. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is all stuff that I could have checked earlier and I didn't. So, here we are. <laughs> okay. We're back at it again. <laughs> Sorry about that delay. Oh, this is all going so well. I, this is going to be great when I make my compilation of failures when I'm trying to put this thing together. So, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, so 
Um, miniature basing is what we're trying to do at this time. That's what we're doing tonight. So, as I mentioned before, <clears throat> I play Dungeons and Dragons. Um, Adam and I play together in a couple of different groups. Um, we have a group that we've been playing with for about five years now, um, through two different campaigns. And we've got another one that we do on Wednesdays. Um, so my friend Mike is very big into painting and basing miniatures. And last session, he gifted me with this little guy, this little armadillo miniature that he sculpted himself. This is not, this was not a pre-bought miniature. This is a one of a kind armadillo mini that he sculpted for me. And he left it the base blank because he knows that I love basing my minis. And he's actually the one who taught me um, pretty much everything I know about basing miniatures. And he specifically said that he wanted to make sure that I could have my armadillo match with the rest of my set of my character miniatures right there. So he wanted to give me the opportunity to do the basing myself so that I could make them all match. So I painted these minis myself. I did all the basing for them. Um, this is my main uh, ranger character. And the story behind the armadillo is she has a familiar in addition to her animal companion. Um, and I'll get into that in just a second. But basically um, we are going to take our little armadillo and we're gonna make it match these. So no painting necessary here, um, but it needs to be done because I want them all to, to match and be a matching little set. So that's what we're gonna be doing here tonight. Now, as I have said in the past, I'm not an artist. As I have said in the past, I am not an expert at any of the stuff that I do here. I just like to do it. And that goes for mini basing as well. I am not an expert on painting minis um, or putting bases on minis. And a lot of the things that I do for basing my minis is out of sheer simplicity. I don't even do this stuff because it makes it look the best. I just do this because I think it looks okay and it goes by pretty quickly. So if you're someone who has experience with basing miniatures or you've watched other people with more experience based miniatures, don't come at me. I, I just need to do this so that my minis look good and don't have plain blank bases. All right. So I'll talk you through my method, but just be aware that this is not the same advice that you're going to hear from anybody who does like massive amounts of minis for like Warhammer or they do a whole bunch of terrain for other stuff like just I'm here to have a good time all right that's why we're all here so we are going to give this little guy a base that looks generally like a forest floor that's kind of the the dream here I'm sorry I keep shifting everything I'm just not happy with how things are laid out right now oh everything is horrible with this setup so the first thing that needs to happen is that we actually, um, yes, I decided that the first thing I was going to do was to rough up the plastic. I want to make the plastic rougher so that the glue is able to hold better on the plastic. You could say it's scoring the plastic. Don't know if it's 100% necessary. Don't really care. I know that I've done this before and it seemed to work pretty well. So that's what I'm gonna do here and now. I think I have lost my file. Oh, good. Good, good. Good, Chels. Good. Doing excellent work here. It's in another box.
it's here. It was in this box. So I am simply going to use the file that I got in my book nook kit. And I'm just going to do some very quick filing over the plastic of the base so that it can be a little bit rougher. Um, you might call this scoring. Um, you might call it hatching. I think that's a term used with like clay. I'm not entirely sure. But the general idea is to just make the plastic a little bit rougher and give it some grooves that the glue, the adhesive can hold on to better. And I have to be very careful not to harm my little armadillo. As I said, Mike sculpted this himself. This is one of a kind, hand sculpted. And if I'm not careful, I can ruin everything. So I'm just gonna do a very small amount of filing to rough up the plastic here. Yeah, just a very, you can't even really tell that there's much of a difference, but just a very small amount to get to get this a little less smooth. Just to give some grooves for the adhesive without hurting my little armadillo. Okay. So next order of business, I am going to be using, and this again, I got all these tips from Mike, who is the one who sculpted the armadillo. Um, he's the one who taught me pretty much everything I know about basing. So I'm gonna go off of the tips that he gave me for easy bases and they have worked well for me. So I'm gonna just stick with these and the camera is going absolutely nuts. Trying to focus. Oh boy. Okay, we're gonna. Wow, it is really having a hard time. It is not doing well. What on earth? may have fixed the problem was it was getting too much reflection off of the base hopefully that was the case all right so now i'm all scared that that thing's not gonna work okay we're just gonna work we're just gonna go with it we're just gonna go um so the first step is we are going to coat the base with a watered down solution using plain old Elmer's school glue. So Mike did, I think one part Elmer's glue to one part water, basically just watering it down so it's not pure glue. And that's mainly to help one, to make it a little easier to work with. And two, it's not gonna be a big gloopy mess uh, that, you know how Elmer's glue can solidify and be really like thick and chunky. We don't want that with the base. So the water kind of helps dilute it a little bit to make it easier to spread and to work with and to prevent clumping and solidifying. So I'm gonna do this mixing in this. <laughs> This is a con this is a case for a contact. And I use these because I can um I can just go ahead and throw this away when I'm done. I don't have to worry about washing it out or keeping it because it's just disposable disposable plastic. So um I like to use those and I just before I throw anything before I throw them away, I just pull them out of the trash and rinse them out so there's no saline and then I dump that. So um, typically with this process, you wanna choose a paintbrush that is not one of your favorites. You wanna use an, a paintbrush that's not high quality, that's not super expensive. I just went ahead and I bought a pack of like toddler paintbrushes, like training paintbrushes. And I use these for all of my basing because if they get stuck together with glue, I'm not gonna be too broken up about it. And they're cheap enough that they can be easily replaced. So. 
I'm gonna need to do more than just some drops of water in here, but I don't wanna, don't want to spill. So yes, exothermic says one to one glue and water, which sounds sounds about like like what I've heard. So basically, we just don't want to have it be all gluey. But we're not quite making like we're not doing make, making paper mache or anything. We just need it to be diluted a little bit. That works. That looks pretty good. So I always put this, put down a layer on the base first. He's gonna be a little interesting because he doesn't have a lot of room underneath his little face and his little belly. Oh, I was supposed to explain the significance of this. So my character, um, we switched over from Pathfinder to 5e. And we were initially playing uh, the Pathfinder campaign, um, Iron Fang Invasion. And Adam is, D is the DM, and he was having a rough time with trying to keep track of all the rules. And we were spending more time arguing about Pathfinder rules than we were really spending time enjoying the campaign. So Adam decided that he wanted to, um, he wanted to run the campaign and convert it into 5e instead. So the the right the um, class that I had played in Pathfinder was a hybrid class. It was the hunter, which is a hybrid between a uh, ranger and a druid. I love the hybrid classes in Pathfinder. I think that's a really cool, unique idea. And I like the fact that um, you kind of get the best of both worlds without having to get the worst of each different class. Um, I played a hybrid class in the first campaign we ever played, which was Iron Gods in Pathfinder. I played an investigator, which is a hybrid class of an alchemist and a rogue. And then eventually I went and multi-classed into full alchemist. And we had a lot of things stack um, between the investigator and the alchemist. Long story short, we had to do some some uh, homebrewing to translate a lot of the features of the hunter hybrid class into 5e. And one of the things that I got from taking a prestige class of hunter in Pathfinder is I got a spell called Spectral Scout, which loosely translates into Find Familiar in 5e. So that's the spell that I use now. My, my ranger has her animal companion, and she has this uh, familiar that she can summon, which is, uh, I decided is this little armadillo. So Mike sculpted me this armadillo to represent that spectral scout, uh, that familiar whenever I am able to summon him. So we have to make him match my other minis because they're all part of a set and they're all part of a group. So before the glue dries too much, let me go ahead and show you this weird little trick. And this is where, Ah, where'd it go? This is where I do things a little bit different. So we do have a basing kit that is the Army Painter basing kit. And I use that for a lot of the finishing touches, but I have a secret weapon that I use for my bases that I swear by. And I have used for all of the, almost all the minis that I have based for myself because this stuff, this is amazing. Play dirt. I found this stuff at a dollar store. It has changed my life. And I am gonna use this for every every mini that I have to base ever. So if you're familiar at all with kinetic sand, this is like kinetic sand, but it's dirt version. So it's got um, that kind of, I don't know the best way to describe it. It's kind of got that squishy, it's got that squishy feeling of kinetic sand, but it's got all the colors of dirt. And the whole gist is that, you know, oh, your kid wants to play in dirt? Well, have them play with this stuff, and but then it's a lot easier to clean up because it kind of sticks together. So as you look at this stuff, instead of just being like flat brown, it really does have different 
varieties and variations of color like actual soil would do. And so I just happened to find this stuff. I was at the dollar store looking for something else for basing. I don't even remember what it was, maybe sand, trying to do some weird bases. And I found this stuff and I went, holy crap, this is exactly what I needed. So this is what I use. And I swear by this every, every single time. So what I have done is I have taken some of that play dirt and I mixed it in with some actual grit from like outside. And that allows me to have the varieties of the, of textures and colors of the play dirt of the soil, but it also gives some variety because then it's got some rocky bits in there as well. So this is a mixture that I use of the play dirt and of the um, regular, just like gravel grit from the gutter. And I have it in this little container so that what I can do is that I can just kind of lightly toss my miniature in the dirt like so, so that all of this mixture can stick to, you can barely even see him in there. He's right there. So that all of the, the grit and the dirt will stick to the glue that I put down on the base. Just give them a gentle little toss in there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of pat it down and brush off any excess. Cause I don't want, I don't want it to be clumped up too tall. So I'm just gonna brush it down so that there's just enough sticking to the glue. But it's not like a mound surrounding. <gasps> I bent his little ear. Gonna have to fix that in a second. <sighs> he warned me. Mike even said he's like, be careful, because his ears are the the most delicate part. So I'm gonna have to fix that. Now the issue here with my little armadillo is he's so small that a little bit of this dirt just clumps up. So what I'm gonna try to do, I'm gonna try really carefully to excavate his little legs. And his little head. Just so it's a little more visible. I'm gonna have to go in. There's some clumps missing. I'm gonna have to go in and do a little spot filling because there's some there's some bald spots where you can see the black. Oh, his poor little ear. All right. 
I'm just gonna do a little spot, spot filling. Just to very, you know, just very carefully spreading a little more dirt around. And you can't actually see anything I'm doing. I'm sorry about that. I'm very bad about keeping this visible for all of you. Okay, it has reached that point where I know if I mess with it anymore, I'm gonna ruin something or break something and then I'm just not gonna be happy. So, there we go. It's kinda hard to see against him, but we've got the dirt and grit mixture put down. And it's gonna look a lot better once we add our finishing touches. But before we can add any finishing touches, the next thing that needs to happen is a second coat of the glue mixture that just seals everything in. This part I like to be pretty generous with. Elmer's glue dries clear and especially since it is uh, diluted it's not going to be too clumpy and it's not going to have any big like blobs of dried glue. And the whole point here is to, to seal it. So it just provides, the first coat was for adhesive purposes to get the dirt to stick. The second coat is to seal it, just to make sure that everything stays where it was placed and just give it a little bit of protection so that nothing comes flying up or off. Yeah, good old glazed dirt, yes. And I know I said I wasn't gonna mess with them anymore, but I do see a little patch that doesn't have any add that in there just slap that on top so yeah so it does look a bit like glazed dirt right now but as I said that's gonna dry clear and when it does that the dirt still kind of has a rough texture and you can still see all the variations in texture and color but it's just a little bit more solid than having some some loose dirt hanging around so that's pretty much the end of the actual basing part. And now we get to do the fun stuff, which is the, uh, well, what was it? Finishing touches. Oh my goodness. Losing it. So two different things that I use for finishing touches that just kind of add a little more dimension to the base, but just make it really stand out. So the first thing is the greenery, the plants, and the second thing are 
the rocks that just, they just, they just add a little something to it. So, well, I guess I'll do the rocks first cause I've already got them here. So once again, I just went outside and I looked in the gutter and I found some pieces of gravel that were big enough that they would stand out if they were mixed in with the plate dirt, but small enough that they are not gonna look too terribly out of place with my miniature. So I like to throw in two, maybe three of these. That one looks like a good size rock. And, um, maybe that one. And again, I'm not an expert in any way, but I'm going to, I'll give you my advice. I think it's good to have a variety of different sizes of rocks. It just looks more natural. Um, if these are creatures that are hanging out in the forest or in the wild, not every rock is going to be the same exact size. You're going to have some that are small. You're going to have some that are, that are larger, some that are really big. So... Um, no, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like doing two rocks. Yes, free range gravel, grass fed. <laughs> so yeah, so rocks are the first thing. And when I put on my finishing touches, I go ahead and I use the Army Painter uh, basing glue. This came in the Army Painter basing kit along with different kinds of terrain like gravel, snow, um, some different rock sizes that can be used and uh, grass. So there's a whole kit that you can get for basing minis to make it really easy. And it gives you a bunch of basic terrain pieces to give you all sorts of really nice looking basic minis. So we have that kit. I just prefer my plate dirt <laughs> myself. And this is the glue that they provided with it. I don't think there's anything chemically different between this and Elmer's glue. I think it's literally the same kind of stuff, just packaged in a different bottle. But I do prefer to use this and use this to stick on rocks and um, like plants and foliage, just because I feel like it is a little more trustworthy because it is branded. I, I, I trust the branding basically, even though I know that logically it's probably exactly the same as the Elmer's. I just like to, to, to be, to be sure. So we are going to use that and we're going to use that to put on our rocks. Oh, except it's all crusty. There we go. I do not remember the last time I based a mini. It actually might have been. Nope. I know exactly which one my last one was. It was the, um, it was my sorcerer. That's what, I, that's what I did. And I used the full basing kit. I had a feeling we were running out of this stuff. Oh man. Nope, it is clogged up. Oh man. Where's my paper clip? Oh, one sec, folks. that would have something to do with it. That would explain. <laughs> oh man, well, this stuff might be just useless. This stuff might just be shot. 
Oh, good. Because it is all congealed in there. Like, it is not... Nope, it's it's done for. It's done for. Oh, good. All right, well. Elmer's it is. <laughs> Elmer's it is then. Ugh, that's just gross. Disgusting. So... And it should be fine. I'm not, you know, these are not toys that are being uh, thrown about. Okay, where do I want to put this rock? Eh, we'll stick it. I think right here. There we go. These little tweezers that I got with the book nook kit have actually turned out to be, uh, have actually turned out to be significant. <laughs> yes, press F to pay respects to the bottle of glue. Ugh, disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. Okay. Hopefully if I don't mess with the Elmer's glue too much, it will dry okay, everything will hold out okay, and it'll be fine. We'll see how this goes. And I got one more rock. And I think I'm just gonna pop it over here. On the other side. Okay. He's got a couple rocks. His poor ear. I've got to figure out how to fix that. I'm just trying to clean up. There's some globs of Elmer's glue that came came out from the rocks, so I'm just trying to spread those out a little. Ooh. Just so it's not so clumpy. Now I. No, I'm I'm not gonna mess with it. We're gonna stick with just the two, the two um, pebbles. Did the glue have a will? <laughs> Clearly not a will to live. Yuck yuck. Oh boy. All right. So after the rocks, the next and last finishing touch is the foliage. Now, in the Army Painter kit that we got, we got a couple different types of foliage of various different terrains. Oh, I'm dropping random... Oh, good. All right. Well, that's a mess. I'm going to have to clean up later. Dropping random gemstones everywhere. Don't know where those came from, but they're here. Anyway, um, the basic Army Painter kit came with, like a square about this big from here down with a couple different sizes of different um, types of foliage that was like jungle themed or was plains themed or forest themed. Um, we, we ran out pretty quick. So I went to the local hobby store and I bought um, a couple of bigger packs so that we have a, lar a different variety of sizes of foliage and of colors of foliage. Now, these two were recommended to me by a person who worked at the hobby shop who also does a lot of miniature basing. And I explained to him, I said, you know, we're going for a forest theme and uh, I'm, I'm trying to find some different options for like woods, like temperate forest. So he recommended to me getting the woodland tuft, which is this right here that has a little bit more brown and tan listed in there but he also recommended getting the uh the swamp tuft and he said that the swamp tuft which is a little bit more green and lush um that putting the two of them together provides a nice amount of contrast 
so that your so that it, the the woodland terrain doesn't look too boring and uniform. And so what this uh, this hobbyist recommended to me is he said use them both together to create a variety of that communicates that forest feel between the swamp and the woodland. So here on my big guy, you can see here that's the woodland tuft there. And then I included some of the swamp tufts back here. So it does provide some nice contrast. I do I do think that having just either the the woodland with the tan or just the jungle that's a little bit more green. I do think that I do think that would be a little bit more boring. So um, his advice was really helpful, and I think that having a little bit of each adds a lot, as long as they're not directly next to each other. That's the key. You want to space them out, or I think you should space out the different colors of foliage, um, just to make it look a little bit more natural. Now, this one's tricky. So, as you can see on the sheets, there's different sizes of grass that can be used. And the really big ones, I think these are meant for like large scale terrains or really, really, really big figures. These are gonna be too big to put against my little tiny armadillo. <laughs> He's gonna get lost. So, the sizing, I mean, I'm looking, I'm, I think, I worry that the medium size is also going to be too big for the armadillo, this size here. But I don't know that I want to just only use the the smallest tufts because that's hmm. then it might just not look quite as dynamic. Okay, well, so what I think I'm going to do, oops, I accidentally pulled up a couple there. Let go. There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna use a small woodland tuft. Oh yes, Sandshrew is a great Pokemon. Adam is really, really into Sand Slash because he learned about pangolins and he really, really likes pangolins. He thinks that they're adorable. Okay, so I'm gonna put this little tuft, I'm gonna put it on the edge here, right next to my rock. Right there. And, I mean, it could probably be enough to just have that one little tuft of grass but I kind of think, I kind of think I want to put another one, like, back here. Um, yeah, the medium-sized one could be okay. <gasps> oh no! I dropped him on his broken ear. Oh dear. I'm gonna have to fix that in a second, that broken ear. All right, we're talking Pokemon, everybody's favorite. Mama Swine, Turtwig. So I did not play a lot of the games. The only game that I know I have consistently played the most was, I shouldn't say the game. I played Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. I think those are the only games that I actually played. Um, I always started out with Torchic in those. Um, if I... I always pick fire starters. I think I just I just always pick fire starters. I know that if I I know I would definitely pick Cyndaquil as the starter for um what is that? Hoenn? Was that Hoenn? Totodile, Chikorita, and uh Cyndaquil, was that Hoenn? Somebody will get back to me. Anyway, I always pick fires. Um, I wouldn't say that they're my favorite type, but I just, I relate to fire, fire types. I like 
Dugong. I think Dugong's pretty cool. Again, I haven't played Dugong. I'm solely basing that off of how I think it looks. I think Dugong looks pretty cool. Hoenn was, was Trico, Mudkip, and Torchic. Okay, so what was Cyndaquil, Chikorita, and Totodile? Was that not Hoenn? Was that, um... Johto! Thank you. I think I was thinking of Ho-Oh that showed up in Johto, and then I did that. No, Chikorita's the grass type, but I but Chikorita and Cyndaquil and Totodile were all the three starters for Johto. So that's how I just remember them. Um, I didn't play it. I just I just know those pretty well. Um, so anyway. I have always said my favorite Pokemon, and this is going to be super basic, my favorite Pokemon, not basic because it's a legendary, um, my favorite Pokemon is Lugia. I'm a big fan of Lugia because I loved uh, the movie. I loved Pokemon the movie 2000, and I love, um, I just loved Lugia, so um, yeah, that one's my favorite. I also really love Suicune. Again, it's a legendary, so that's kind of a lame thing to go with. Um, for more basic Pokemon, I really like Mimikyu. For some reason, I just really bond and like Mimikyu speaks to me. <laughs> this poor Pokemon with this backstory that like, it just wants to be loved. And so the way that it decides to be loved is it's gonna dress up like the most popular Pokemon. Like, that is so sad. I I love I love Mimikyu. I'm actually looking. So one sec. So for Christmas a a year or two ago, um, for Christmas a year or two ago, one of my best friends hand drew all of us, um, our our Pokemon teams, and um we could decide if we wanted to be a, um, if we wanted to be a gym leader or just a regular trainer. And then she drew us, uh, drew compilations of the Pokemon that we picked out as our starting six. And uh, so I've got mine right here if anyone's interested. So she made this for all of uh, everybody in our friend group. So as you can see, I picked Mimikyu up there. Uh, I also picked uh, Dragonair, because I've always loved Dragonair. I've got Jolteon, whoops, because in our friend group, I am Jolteon <laughs> of the Evolutions. I picked Persian because I love cats and I don't like Meowth, but I like Persian. And then I picked the female Nidoran because I've always really liked the design of female Nidoran for whatever reason, I just think that it's very cute. And I liked that it's like, oh, it's this little poisonous guinea pig. And then I also picked Go Goat because everybody who knows me knows that goats are like my favorite animal. So I picked Go Goat in there as well. So that's my trainer lineup. Um, I don't know what I would pick if I were going to be a gym leader. I. I had a hard time doing that because I don't really feel, I don't know, I don't feel like I like enough Pokemon of one specific type that I could then make a gym with six Pokemon of one specific type. And I know that sometimes gym leaders don't all use the exact same, uh, the exact same types, but I know that you know, the goal is to have them be very similar in types. So, um, so my friend actually, um, a year after she drew these for us, she went ahead and started her own um, illustration business, Chubby Worm Art. I need to go ahead and plug that. Um, she has been working a lot on doing fan work and commissions and original art. Uh, she actually illustrated and uh, is is self-publishing her own children's book um, based on her own original art and original characters. So it's actually really cool for me that I have an original Chubby Worm art drawing that was custom made for me. Um, but I mention that because she has done a lot of other Pokemon uh, that she puts together in series. She has drawn all the evolutions. She has done a bunch of different starters. She's done all kinds of Pokemon collections. And she 
<laughs> she has been told that the faces of her evolutions in particular, they all look like Ditto. And I I have to agree. Like the way that she does their faces, she try she tries to go for a very simplistic uh style in the Pokemon faces. But she did. She made it look like six or eight Ditto turned into all of the evolutions because they've all got the just the little dots for eyes and kind of that blank spooky smile and it just looks like a team of ditto it's really really funny i like i I like that a lot and i'm looking at this nidoran and i'm like oh man that nidoran also looks a bit like a ditto that is just hanging out and doing its own thing so very cool adam his is up there let me grab it really quick So Adam decided that he wanted to do a, he decided he wanted to be a gym leader for his compilation drawing. And he decided on a steel and electric gym for his Pokemon. So that's his. So he got Steelix, um, oh my gosh, why am I for, Metagross, good lord. Um, Is that? Is that Agron? Is that what that one is? Is that Agron? Somebody help. Is that Agron? Anyway, so he's he's got, yeah, I think it's Agron. Celix, Metagross, Agron. He put in, um, I don't remember what this one is. It evolves from Oh my gosh, I don't remember what this one is. I know it's electric. I don't remember what it is. And then Raichu and uh, Lucario. Ampharos. Thank you. Ampharos. I'm sitting here and I'm like, it evolves from Mareep. It comes from Mareep, but I don't remember what it is. Thank you. Ampharos. So, um, oh no, you're right. It's Flaffy, isn't it? No, wait. Is it Mareep then Flaffy? Or Flaffy than Mareep. I don't remember. I do not remember. For the life of me. I'm not good at Pokemon, if you can't tell. I'm I'm really not good. Mareep, then Flaffy, and then Ampharos. Thank you very much, Ben. I, like I said, I'm not good with Pokemon. I know vaguely what they look like, and I know vaguely what their names are. So, anyway. Um... But yes, so Adam went ahead and picked a gym compilation. I went with a general trainer compilation because I can't pick a theme for mine. If I had to pick a theme for a gym, I would probably do... Gosh. Maybe poison? I might do poison Pokemon, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I always thought that I wanted to be like Misty and I wanted to be a water trainer, but I don't like another, I don't like enough water type Pokemon to be able to do that and put them on my team and yeah. So, Shiny Mareep is better than every Pokemon in the game. (laughs) Um, Oh, Wooloo, the one that came out, the sheep that came out in um, Sword and Shield. I like that one too. That one, that one is adorable. The Wooloo is absolutely adorable. I love that one. Adam's favorite Pokemon that he has mentioned, or at least that I'm aware of, unless he has a secret favorite that I don't know about. He loves Squirtle a lot. He absolutely loves Squirtle. So... Kind of goes along with that that turtle theme with Shuckle. I like Shuckle. I think Shuckle's cool. The, um... Was Shuckle Hoenn? I don't know. But I think that Shuckle came out at the same time as, um... No, I can't remember it. The thing with a paintbrush for a tail. <laughs> I can't remember the name of it. Anyway. 
All right, I better get out some super glue and fix this guy's ear before I forget. Sorry for the crinkling, I have to get out new super glue. Not sponsored, by the way. This is just what I use. <laughs> I like that. I like that gif of. I like that sassy Charmander. I'm a big fan of. <laughs> I like Charmander a lot. Oh, um, Ben, I think you mentioned about um, selling the Pokemon card. What was it that you got three hundred dollars for it? It was a holographic Charizard, wasn't it? Classic. I'll check, the name was weird. I used to babysit for a kid who actually, who tried to actually teach me the rules of the trading card game. Like he actually knew the rules and he was trying to trade me the, um, or trade me. He tried to teach me the way of playing the actual card game. And I'm like, that's not how, we don't do that here. That's not how we do things here. Fixed his little ear. It's fixed now. Yeah, so this, like I said, this guy is com was molded completely uh, by hand out of green stuff. If you're familiar with green stuff, it is a molding putty. Um, it works a lot like epoxy where it's got two parts and when you mix them together, it creates a chemical reaction that then um, makes a very strong uh, adhesive or uh, sculpting item. And uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's, it's a sculpting putty that a lot of people use to add things onto miniatures to give them tails or weapons or what have you. Mike, the friend who made me my little armadillo, um, he actually, he took a Pikachu amiibo and he used green stuff to sculpt the uh, bandana. In Smash Bros, Pikachu wears that green bandana and he sculpted the green bandana onto his amiibo. And so now he has a green Pikachu amiibo. Was it green or was it blue? I think it was green, but yeah, so he actually, he sculpted it on there and it was really cool. So now he's got a cool custom amiibo that he can play with or just look at and observe. So, okay. Um, so we are pretty much done with this little guy. So once he dries, then all of the uh, dirt will be brown and he is now officially part of the set. I really feel like he needs another rock. Like I'm just, I feel like he needs another rock up there. Yeah, let's give him another rock. I love Party Hat Pikachu, yes. I'm with you, Sauce Farmer. Party Hat Pikachu is my favorite because it looks like you're stabbing people with the party hat. Hey, since we're on this topic, let's talk Smash Brothers characters. Favorite Smash Brothers characters. Because I think the Pokemon trainer actually ended up being, being great in that. A little rock. That's a good size rock. Sauce Farmer, you and I, we're on the same page. My friends hate it when I play Zelda. They absolutely hate it when I play Zelda because I'm pretty good. I spam that Din's fire 
And I also spam Furore's Wind because one, you can teleport across the stage and two, you can do damage when you disappear and when you reappear. They hate it when I play Zelda. They, the minute that I pull out, um, the minute that I pull out my Zelda, they all just lose their mind. Ben Peach is my second favorite with the booty bump. She is, I, I like both of the classic Nintendo girls. I, I like playing both of them a lot. What else did we, yeah, we've got a bot in here. Just don't acknowledge, I don't know. Um, oh, I guess they seem to think that I have the potential to be really big, so I need to buy followers, <laughs> clearly. Um, what do we say? Ice Climbers and DDD. Ice Climbers is so infuriating to me. So much. Bless you for having the patience to deal with the Ice Climbers. Um, Samus, Marth, and Young Link. And then Peach. Yes. And then Sauce Farmer with me on, on Zelda. The other one that I'm also pretty, pretty good with Cloud. I'm 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 a big fan of Cloud. I really really like playing as Cloud. The Sephiroth uh, release was disappointing. Um, it is entirely possible that I am doing it wrong and playing Sephiroth completely wrong. But I don't know. I just feel like there should be a lot more. Um... <laughs> I just read Exotherm's comment. I'm not a bot, but Rob is Loki. <laughs> Fun. I'm clearly tired because that is some quality, some quality humor right there. Thank you. Thank you for blessing us with that joke. I love it. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Sephiroth. I feel like that sword should do a lot more damage. You know how Marth is, um, you know how Marth is kind of geared to do more damage with the tip of the sword? supposedly. That's kind of what I expected from Sephiroth. I thought that Marth would be a tipper. I thought that, not Marth, I thought that Sephiroth would be, I thought the tip of Sephiroth, Sephiroth's sword would be a bigger issue because it's so long. <laughs> but instead it feels like, and disclaimer, I have never, I have never played Final Fantasy VII. The only exposure I have to Final Fantasy is through uh, Advent Children. That's it. That's all. I've, I've only seen Advent Children. I don't know. I barely know anything about the game. I don't play Final Fantasy. Um, but it feels like with Sephiroth... Yeah, that was a good decision. That last rock was a good decision. It feels like with Sephiroth, instead of using the sword as much as they maybe could have. It feels like they decided to rely a lot more on his, like, mana. Is it mana? Yeah, mana-based attacks and, like, his magic attacks. And, you know, sure, subverts expectations. I'm sure a lot of people expected that Sephiroth was going to be a much bigger sword threat than uh, he turned out to be. But, I don't know, the guy's claim to fame is the big sword. Um... I did think it was extremely edgy for Nintendo to go ahead and recreate, uh... So they didn't just recreate Advent Children when they were announcing Sephiroth's addition to the game. They didn't just recreate Advent Children, they recreated Advent Children Complete, which is a lot more... a lot more violent. And, uh, the fact that they teased, uh, Mario getting stabbed through the shoulder in the way that Cloud was stabbed through the shoulder in that movie. That had, that was some guts. I, I liked that trailer a lot. It, I mean, yeah, they had to keep it, you know, G for, for their children, their children sponsors, audience. But I thought it was pretty cool that they, uh, they recreated that. So anyway, um, the only, the, that, that's the only character that I have actually, like, purchased the download of, is Sephiroth. I didn't buy Minecraft Steve. I don't care. I didn't buy the Piranha Plant. I didn't buy the, the, what's his name? Joker, the Persona character. I didn't bother with him. So, I am, I'm good with the, the basic characters of Smash. 
that's the one video game that I would feel comfortable streaming, <laughs> is Smash. So maybe the children are the sponsors in the same way of the sponsors of the Hunger Games. EXO, where have you been hiding with all of these zingers? Oh my gosh, you're absolutely right. Um, what was I saying? I don't remember what I was saying, but yeah, I think, uh, I think if I were going to stream a video game, it would probably be, I would probably do Smash. That's probably the only one I would feel comfortable streaming. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, shut off the paint cam for right now because I'm, I'm done with the basing for the day. Let me just go ahead and show you my little set here. So... We have, I've got a lot of minis for this particular set. So this, like I said, this is my my ranger character. Her name is Farah. She is a half elf. This is her animal companion. His name is Argent. He is a creature known as a war cat, uh, which in Pathfinder is basically a gigantic saber tooth tiger with armadillo armor. So he's got natural armor, uh, plating on him. This mini is not a war cat mini because real war cats, the, the official uh, art is freaky. So I went with something a little bit better. And this white spot is intentional. It is meant to look like a scar with some white fur around it. So that is intentional. And then of course we have my new beautifully based armadillo. That is the familiar. His name is Stannis. <laughs> and Give me one sec. Part of what I did before uh, Argent, the cat, before Argent leveled up and became large sized, I made some medium sized versions of him. So I got two models in a kit that were like a leopard and a, a panther or something like that and I just sculpted and painted them and modeled them to look like the big guy so before he was big he he was little so he grew whoops a little bit backwards so yeah so this is my complete set now and unless Mike has any other surprises for me these are the only minis that I should need for the rest of the game so Stannis the armadillo is going to finish dry and then I will be able to use him up, um, use him up. I should be able to use him again on our next, uh, on our next, at our next session. So good times there. Good stuff there. Oh, they look really good together. Like I'm really happy with how they all match. I love it. I love it. I love it a lot. It was really nice of Mike to uh, make this for me, and it's just a special little addition <laughs> to my collection. And with the base, he's he's just ready to go out on missions, guys. Stannis the Armadillo is just ready to go out on missions and help people out. At our last game, we used Stannis the Armadillo to... He was trying to scout out a mine, because we were like, hey, this mine seems like it's collapsing, and it might be, you know, might be full of traps. We should send, uh, you know, someone who's not a player <laughs> in to scout the mines. And so I sent in Stannis the Armadillo. He got killed by a ghost. <laughs> not killed. He got uh, poofed back into the Fey Realm by a ghost. Um, so I gotta bring him back in the game, but he was helpful. The first time we tried to use him to scout, he did a really bad job of perceiving and he went in a whole in a circle so he came right back to us where he started and he's just trying so darn hard so darn hard but now he is based and finished and he is uh he's gonna look perfect next to the rest of my minis so lovely oh all right um I originally was going to uh, try to continue on with the book nook, but I just, I, this has been a very stressful couple of days. I'm on spring break. It shouldn't be stressful, but it's been a very stressful couple of days. And so um, I just really wanted to get uh, 
Stan is finished and um, we're going to call it a night. So um, the next stream is planned for, I think, April 16th. I think April 16th is the date because next Friday is the 9th, which is when I'm off. Because remember, um, or if you don't know, uh, if you're new here, welcome. Um, I normally stream every other Friday uh, at 7 p.m. Again, this stream got bumped because I, ah, good, lick a tongue, great. I thought, I thought it was vomiting. I forgot it was the tongue <laughs> for a second. Um, anyway, I normally stream uh, every other Friday at 7 p.m. Today's stream got bumped from last night because we had other events going on last night, but I am trying to stick to a bi-weekly schedule um, Fridays at 7. So the next one should be April the 16th, unless we are doing something for my father's birthday because his birthday is the 18th. So we might end up, we might be busy. I don't know, we'll, we'll figure it out. But if you're interested, um, I'm planning on the, the 16th, we're gonna come back and we are going to uh, continue with the book nook. We have one more wall to finish and then we should be able to start uh, putting the box together, hopefully, uh, and then eventually start putting the stairs into place. So we are starting to get into the more complicated part of the book nook and I really need some, uh, <laughs> I need some time to emotionally prepare for that because that's gonna be, very stressful without instructions. So anyway, yeah. So thank you all so much for joining me. Thank you for putting up with the craziness of all the features. Um, I'm glad to see that the, the gifts are working out well. I really enjoyed those. I hope you've enjoyed those as well. Um, I think the closed captioning worked out pretty well. So hopefully that's something that we can continue. If you didn't think that the closed captioning really helped or added anything, uh, feel free to let me know and um, I can change it or I can remove it if you think that would be helpful. Um, and like I said, if you're ever curious about what music is playing during the stream, I am trying to include that as an extension uh, down below in Twitch where you can see what uh, my Spotify is playing while we paint or in this case, while we glue teeny tiny animals onto plastic bases with teeny tiny rocks and grass. <laughs> so um, anyway, yeah. So uh, another final reminder for you, uh, this stream and all of my streams are being saved and archived on my YouTube channel, which is Lady Brave Falcon. Um, I don't cut them down. I just move them over there for posterity um, to keep a record of these projects that I've been working on. But this, a uh, miniature will also be put on there, even though it's not part of the Book Nook um, series. So if you ever want to go back and watch it again, check me out on YouTube. It's a, it's a pretty cool place. It's a pretty okay place. But all right, I have blabbered on long enough. I have a bunch of plastic gemstones that I have to clean up now. So I'm going to go do that. I hope you all have a wonderful night, a wonderful weekend. Thank you for sharing part of your Saturday evening with me. And I look forward to seeing you again in a couple of weeks. Take care, everybody.